Hello and welcome to this month's uh, episode of Refugee Support Insider uh, for people who volunteered with us in the past. Um, I'll dive straight into it. I did some analysis uh, earlier this month because it was International Volunteer Day and um, we have um, 175 of you have come and volunteered um, in Greece and Cyprus and in Moldova over the last 12 months and just as an example of what a kind of international community is that was 24 different nations so it i'm um, just you know it always blows me away that people from all over the world come to help uh, as much as you guys do uh, the other thing i did was look at um people who are volunteering um at, or running the organization so not in the centers where we work and uh there's over 50 of us um you know doing various bits you know trustees um ambassadors uh, the interviewing team and um, the communications people, uh, you know, just a really wide range of people. And so, um, fantastic. I I've put that group of people and how we're organised on our LinkedIn page. And I thought it might be quite nice if um, any of you are on LinkedIn, do find us, Refugee Support Europe or Paul Hutchings, um, and link to us there and, you know, we post bits and pieces about what we're doing as we increasingly are trying to appeal to um, kind of organisations for funding as well. There's, I think the cost of living crisis is going to squeeze kind of fundraising from individuals. Um, challenge. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this one's a bit tricky. I was in Moldova for a week and I went and saw the... Um, donor who has um, who's paid for much of what we're doing there and um, and also saw the people coming in and who we're helping and chatting to them and you know it's really hard to judge um, who is um, deserving of support or not that's not what we do right you know we, we we've identified that we want to help refugees and so where they are um, and then we have a system for our you know identifying who is them in the most need and, and and then we support them without judgment and um having said that you know there are crises around the world where um probably people are struggling much more intensely than they are in in moldova but um you know we're there for three you know at least until the end of march i think you know one of the ways that i look on it is that um, you know, not only are we uh, there supporting people who, e e even if they look fine, um, are clearly struggling because, you know, they've been displaced from their countries. But because it's an opportunity for us to stand against tyranny, if that doesn't sound too kind of noble, you, you know, I think what Russia have done is completely unacceptable. And this is an opportunity for us to say that we stand with the people who have been affected. At least until March, let's see after that. I would love to go to um, other places, um, but you know, the war is intensifying. Putin's uh, insane, so anything could happen. Um, good news, when I was in Moldova as well, I, I, I was chatting to a volunteer um, and it, it occurred to me that he would be brilliant for the first episode of our Selfish Outros podcast, which I plan to launch in January. Uh, and I'm going to be talking to volunteers who have um, uh, talk, who can talk about their experience and talk about actually how um, valuable and rewarding that's been for them, uh, as well as, you know, obviously helping the people that we're helping and, and the kind of, you know, what, what that means and um, some of the conflicts there. Um, and, and so I, the one that I've just spoken to and will be launching in the first week of January um, was in the US Armed Forces, uh, you know, as a fighter pilot. And, you, you know, to go from that life to to this one of, as a humanitarian, a really interesting journey. And, I mean, you know, a really interesting guy and I think a really interesting conversation. So look out for those. The other thing I would love to talk about in those, actually, is something that um, I've been talking to returning volunteers about for a long time, which is the difficulty that that it can be talking about the experience on return, you know, with friends and family who 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 maybe aren't interested, who who don't understand quite what we've done or what you've done, and 
and maybe it's difficult to use the or to come up with the words or the way of speaking about it that feels um acceptable anyway that if you are really keen to be on a podcast i'm going to be doing about one every week and i think also um from now probably until i don't know let's say april june um because uh, you know you guys are interesting i think these are really interesting conversations and i think that lots of people would be interested in hearing them so that was it um thank you very much if you've got this far um it just leaves me to say you know happy christmas enjoy your holidays um, let's hope for a peaceful um, and calm 2023 because this year has been mad, right? I mean, we've been in the UK. I don't know about where you guys are, but um, it's been a long, tough year. And um, I wish you all a nice break and a wonderful 2023.